Hi. Let me, let me change something first. Alright, hey guys, welcome to the business world. Today is July the 19th, 2010, and yes, I am back on my regular schedule. And also, you can see I'm on widescreen now. I don't know why I was on widescreen slash high definition. I was a long time ago, and I think my computer got restarted or something like that. And I never did it after that, but I was too lazy, but I'm back on the widescreen high definition crud, so starting now, you can always see me like this. But anyways, if you haven't checked the news, um, something important happened, you know what, I'll let you watch the clip. I'll let, you know what, watch the clip. Financial reform passed the Senate, it'll go to Obama's desk, he'll sign it, it passed 60 to 38. Yes, the financial reform bill has been passed by the Senate. Uh, this is a remarkable day, history, you know, historical day, whatever you want to say it. Um, like always, there's always three sides to this when Barack Obama signs a bill. There's one side saying this is not good, this is too strong, it's going to choke the U.S. economy, or it's going to choke the U.S. American, you know, try to shove it down the throat. There's always that side, there's always... The side in the middle, the neutral side, saying this is an okay bill, but there's some problems to it. There's some cons, there's some pros, and we need to fix a little stuff up to be better. And there's the other side of the right saying, like, it's it's an okay start, but there's so many loopholes to it. We need to make it stronger, because if we don't make it stronger, nothing's going to change. Nothing's going to actually happen. So, just like always, Barack Obama has to face those three sides. And to be fair, it's not just Barack Obama. President Bush, Clinton, the other Bush before Clinton, all had to deal with this problem. And that's what happens when you're president. You just have to deal with it. Woo! It's hot out here. But anyways, before I tell you my opinion about this financial reform bill, because I know you guys love my opinion, I'm going to tell you a little iffy, iffy about the financial reform bill. Right, so here's my interpretation of some of the important provision of this major reform package. Um, number one, um... Banning predatory home loans to low income consumers. That's just kind of easy. Uh, I personally believe that's just um, banning banks to give out loans to people they know they can't afford these loans. Um, the banks, Bank of America and some high banks, did it um, to get some easy money because they knew certain people, certain families, certain people couldn't pay off the loans. And as a result, they would take their house and sell them during the during the housing bubble, but when it, the bubble collapsed, the banks had tons, millions of homes, and they couldn't sell them, and as a result, this was one of the major reasons why we were in the recession. Not the reason, but it was a major reason. And another thing that is a very important um, is um, the launch of Consumer Financial Protection Agency, and it's just like um, an agency to protect and watch and regulate um, bankers and Wall Street to uh, become too big and do risky business which is going to result in another recession or depression. And um, also another important thing I believe is um, restoring the wall between commercial and investment banking, which just means um, um, trying to prevent a barrier so banks won't be too big, uh, such as AIG and Goldman Sachs and Bank of America, too big to fail. And as a result, we, when they do fail, we, the taxpayer, have to pay, have to pay for their mistakes. So these are some important uh, steps, and not important stuff, but these are important stuff in the financial reform bill that many Democrats and some Republicans believe is going to prevent another recession. Like I said in the video, the big, that's not the problem. The big problem is many people believe that it's not going to help or it's going to be too tight for the free market, you know, because as a capitalist country we want that free market and they believe that the regulators are going to be referees and it's going to stop um, the country to create a perfect economy and some other people are saying there's so many loopholes to it so the main topic is, is if the financial reform bill is actually going to make a difference in the u.s economy if it's going to is if it's going to be a good if it's going to make a good difference or if it's going to make a bad difference but uh, my opinion of this is, like always, you know, many people say I'm too liberal, you know, I'm not conservative, but I'm for this financial reform bill. Uh, I'm not like like the people on the right, you could say, like the, like some people saying, I think it's kind of weak, there's some loopholes to it. But at the end of the day, it's, uh, we need this bill. Um, I'm not trying to say this as a, like a Democrat or like, you know, anti-Republican. I just personally believe that we need this bill because I'm sick and tired of hearing these 
some of these banks too big to fail, you know. And I, 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 when I grow up, I don't want to pay for these uh, banks to do these stupid gamblings, make some couple of mills and even couple of billions of dollars. And when they screw up, we have to pay for their mistakes. And after that, they go off the jet and buy a private island with this because they act like child with no consequences. And I'm sick and tired of us paying for their stupid mistakes. And I, we need a financial reform bill to prevent that. We need some agency. We need some referees to watch over the, uh, watch over the, um, the U.S. economy. I'm for free market. I'm for um, I'm for companies to uh, be free and not be choked by the government. Like during the World Cup, for example, I'm for I like I hate when the referees blow the whistle for every damn every damn trip or every damn fault. Some of those soccer players are acting. You know, and some of these fouls are stupid fouls. And during the 2010 World Cup, some of the referees were blowing and giving yellow cards the dumbest things ever. But at the same time, we do need referees at the end of the day. Because sometimes people do stupid plays, stupid uh, stupid plays. Some people are extremely offside, and we just need referees to control the game. Yeah, sometimes the referees are going to screw up a couple of times or be a little bit too strict or too easy on them. But at the end of the day, any soccer fan or any any sport fan can say that without referees, the game would not be what it is now. So, just like the referees in sports, we need referees in the free market society. I know some people are going to disagree with me and call me stupid, but at the end of the day, we need this. So, thank you for watching The Business World. What's your opinion on this? Do you think it's too weak? Do you think it's too strong? Do you think we need to fix? Do you think there's some... There's some good stuff in it, and this, but there's too many loopholes in it. What's your opinion about the finance reform bill? And I'll see you next week with a new topic. Peace out.